Welcome to Understanding Flood Disclosure and Preparedness, a training by the Waterfront Alliance for New Jersey. This training was created in March 2024 by the Waterfront Alliance as an educational tool for New Jersey residents to learn about the new state law in flood disclosure and how it serves as a pathway for us to better prepare ourselves for extreme weather and flood risk. This training can be used by community groups as well as individual residents to raise awareness about flood disclosure and the resources available to us in our state. Slides are available in PDF form as well. This training is also available in Spanish on our YouTube channel. So what is the purpose of this training? To learn how climate change is impacting our region, understand new state laws on flood disclosure, to identify your individual flood risk, and to get familiar with resources to prepare yourself. Let's begin by talking a bit about our region, our current climate and flood conditions. So outside of extreme heat, New Jersey experiences three main climate hazards, all of which increase flood risk. These are coastal storms, sea level rise, and extreme rainfall. Due to the impact of climate change, we're going to be seeing an up to 50% increase in intense hurricanes by 2100, up to 25 inches of sea level rise by the 2050s, and up to a 10% increase in overall rainfall. This leads to more frequent, more destructive hurricanes, increased tidal flooding and groundwater table rise, and flooding in non-coastal areas. While the statistics on the previous slide are projections for the future, we are already seeing the impacts of climate change. On September 29, 2023, New Jersey experienced an extreme rain event, which led to flooding in commercial and residential neighborhoods and affected driving and walking conditions. The pictures on this slide are an example of flood conditions that are on the rise. Put down what communities are seeing in real time from these impacts. Firstly, we're seeing a new or increased flooding in our neighborhoods. We're seeing increases in flooding in coastal areas that have historically resided in flood risk zones. For example, towns right by the water. But we're also seeing new flooding in neighborhoods that have historically had little to no flood risk, so more inland areas farther from the waterfront. This is leading to flooding on streets, train stations, parks, community gathering areas, and parking lots. We're also seeing water damage and property loss. Flooding is the most common and most costly natural disaster in the United States. Flood damage can cost tens of thousands of dollars to remedy, and homes that have flooded previously are statistically more likely to flood again. Seeing a very real risk of injury or death. Residents in basement apartments can be quickly overwhelmed by water, and flooding represents a very real risk of injury or death for those residents. Hurricane Ida in 2021 led to the deaths of at least 11 people in New Jersey. And aside from the actual flood, the resulting water damage can often lead to hazardous mold conditions for residents as well. We're also seeing long timelines for resilience infrastructure. Many residents are only just starting to see projects being planned for their communities. And while community visioning has happened, resources are scarce, and we're not sure when exactly these infrastructure projects are going to be completed. What is flood disclosure? Now I'll be giving an overview of the law. First, let me introduce a few key terms. FEMA is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. It creates maps of where flooding is likely to occur in cities across the country and manages and standardizes flood insurance. The floodplain. The FEMA definition of the floodplain is any land area susceptible to being inundated by floodwaters from any source. 
What this really means is the floodplain is any area at risk of flooding. Oftentimes, the floodplain is a low-lying area near a body of water. The special flood hazard area and the moderate risk flood hazard area sound similar, so I'm going to break it down. Both describe an area at risk of flooding during a very large flood event. For example, a historic storm like Hurricane Sandy. The special flood hazard area is an area at risk of flooding during a 100 year flood event or due to a storm the size of which has a 1% chance of happening in any given year. The moderate risk flood hazard area is an area at risk of flooding during a 500 year flood event or after a storm the size of which has a 0.2% chance of happening in any given year. While this doesn't sound particularly common, it's very important to note that due to climate change impacts, these flood events are happening with increasing frequency. Storms leading to severe flooding previously expected to occur once every 100 years, and thus flooding the special flood hazard area, for example, are now projected to occur once every decade. This makes flood disclosure all the more important. So flood disclosure, what is it? It's a law that was passed in New Jersey, effective March 20th, 2024, for renters and homeowners. First, I'm gonna discuss a little bit about what renters need to know and then move on to homeowners. So under the law, landlords must disclose if the property, one, resides in the FEMA designated floodplain, the special flood hazard area, or moderate risk flood hazard area, and two, if the apartment or property has experienced natural flooding in the past, including the type and number of times. This is important because as I mentioned earlier in the training, we're now seeing these extreme rain events that are leading to very hazardous flooding, even in areas that aren't historically in the floodplain. So now for residents that live close to the water and those that live more inland, the landlords are required to disclose if that property either has experienced natural flooding in the past or resides in the floodplain and what type of floodplain it resides in. Landlords must disclose this information on any new or renewal lease. The disclosure form also informs the resident about flood insurance and notes the increase of flooding due to climate change across the state. So what should my landlord give me? As I mentioned before, each new or renewal lease now requires the disclosure form seen on this slide as an additional addendum to the lease. The landlord should have filled out the form before giving it to you to sign and before you sign or renew your lease. As you see, the notice is pretty simple. It lists the law and requires the landlord to write down the full address of the property and then fill out the information below. It asks about the special flood hazard area, the moderate risk flood hazard area, and whether or not the rental premises has flooded in the past. So for home buyers, the law requires that sellers of property disclose if, one, the property resides in the FEMA designated floodplain, the special flood hazard area, or moderate risk flood hazard area, if the property has experienced natural flooding in the past, including type and number of times, but also whether flood insurance is required for the property and if the seller is insured, whether the seller has previously received flooding disaster assistance from FEMA or has ever filed a claim under their flood insurance policy. It also notes the increase of flooding due to climate change across the state. So on this slide, you can see the form that new home buyers are supposed to receive under this law. And this should be part of the overall disclosure of conditions of the property that a new homeowner would expect to receive. So how does the law help? It informs you and your family about your direct flood risk before signing your lease or purchasing your home. 
And for apartments and homes outside of the floodplain, the notice still informs you if the property has experienced flooding in the past. It helps you understand if purchasing flood insurance is right for you and motivates your community to prepare for a flooding emergency. So let's talk about identifying your real flood risk. Let's say you receive this disclosure form from your landlord or when you purchase your house. Now what? If you learn from the form that you live in the floodplain, a flood hazard risk area, and or your home has experienced flooding in the past, you can take the following steps. One, learn what resources are available, and two, prepare for an emergency and future flood. So I'll be discussing the available resources in this next part of the presentation. Flood insurance is usually not included in a standard renter's or homeowner's insurance policy. However, FEMA has created the National Flood Insurance Program, which standardizes rates for flood insurance. This means insurance providers that participate in the NFIP, or the National Flood Insurance Program, should cost the same. However, there are private non-NFIP flood insurance plans that are available on the market, but they are not federally backed. Be wary of those. Even if your landlord has flood insurance, some property owners are mandated to, your personal belongings are not protected. Renters can purchase flood insurance just for their belongings or in insurance lingo, contents. For some homeowners, flood insurance is required, as I mentioned previously. So you can head to FEMA's website linked here to find an insurance plan to protect yourself from a future flood. Retrofits are another great resource available to New Jersey residents to mitigate flooding. If you rent your apartment, ask your landlord if they have retrofitted your building to mitigate flood damage. Homeowners and landlords can often make relatively inexpensive upgrades to their buildings to prevent flood damage. And there are lists available online of the best retrofits one should take to prevent flood damage. New Jersey has also created online resources for residents to get to know their state designated evacuation route in case of a hurricane. Evacuation is often a stressful process, so if you find out that you live in a hazard zone, knowing your route before an evacuation warning is essential. You can head to the New Jersey Flood Mapper and New Jersey Office of Emergency Management to find yours linked here. Another great resource available for New Jersey residents is Nixle, the New Jersey Emergency Alert System. You can sign up for Nixle online to get alerts when extreme weather is coming to the region. These alerts can be in the form of text messages or emails. You can also register to receive the messages by sending a text message with your zip code to 888-777 as an alternative to signing up online. Use the guide linked here, created by the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management, to learn how to best prepare yourself and your family for a potential evacuation. The guide will teach you what to pack in a go kit, what essential medical and personal information to always have accessible, and how to pick a secure meeting place for you and your family members. So what are some frequently asked questions? What should I do if my landlord does not give me a flood disclosure notice form? Some landlords may not be aware of this new law. If you realize you were not given a notice form, first ask your landlord for one. New Jersey DEP also created this interactive map linked here because of the flood disclosure law. You can use the map to find your real flood risk yourself if your landlord never provides you with a form. The tool can send an email directly to you with detailed flood risk information, such as whether you live in a special flood hazard area or their moderate risk flood hazard area. You also have the right under the law to terminate your lease if your flood risk was not disclosed to you at the time of signing and the apartment is in the special or moderate flood risk hazard area. You are owed any rent you already paid for time you will no longer live in the apartment. It's always best to speak with the tenant lawyer to learn your options in this situation. 
What should I do if my landlord does not give me a flood disclosure notice form and then my home floods? According to the law, if your landlord fails to disclose accurate flood risk and then flooding occurs resulting in either one, damage to your personal property, two, the habitability of the property, or three, your access to the property, you may pursue legal action against your landlord to recover damages as your landlord has failed to disclose critical information. Speak with the tenant lawyer to learn your options in this case. To conclude, New Jersey's flood disclosure law ensures residents are given the information and transparency they deserve regarding their flood risk today and has become a nationwide leader on this issue. Understanding our flood risk provides us with the foundation to make the best informed decision about where we choose to call home. However, disclosure does not protect us by itself. Residents must become familiar with climate hazards, extreme weather, and how to prepare for an emergency with the resources available. Thank you.